Awesome. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm one minute behind, Brian, with the delay, so we're going to jump right in. Uh, this is called Say What? So in case you were wondering, it's not Say What. So Say What? So if you hear me do that, you'll know why, all right? Real quick, this is me. Uh, I'm the owner and founder of Kalos Consulting, uh, but more than that, I'm a family person. Uh, this is my family. The pirate in the middle is Ariel, and that's my wife, Valerie. Uh, and so because of that, uh, once I got married, I realized I'm an amateur uh, communicator. So I've grown a lot in the last four years since I've been married. Uh, I'm a big outdoorsman. That's a grouper, in case you were wondering. That is a Fort Myers in Florida delicacy. Uh, that was caught off the coast of Fort Myers. That's $20 on a plate. Uh, so make sure you get some grouper while you're in Florida. This is our company. Uh, Kalos, it's a Greek word. It means excellence. It's an outward sign of an inward good. We started the company because we're passionate about building people, growing team. Uh, and we're a professional uh, services company in the area of staffing and recruiting, and we also do business coaching and consulting. The reason we picked this topic, if you didn't know, is that uh, there's a stigma amongst IT folks and developers that y'all are not great communicators, and I'm here to bust that myth up, because the reality is we all communicate with somebody at some point at some time. Okay? We're on our phones, we have friends, and so there's something that happens when we get in a workplace or an environment where sometimes insecurity creeps in, sometimes we're uncertain, there's a lack of confidence, and so suddenly we become more introverted. And I saw some of you at the 80s party last night, and I would say that you all communicate one way or another, whether it be verbally or with body language, we're all communicators. We were born and bred to say something. And so, at the most basic point, communication is the idea of sharing a thought or a feeling. It involves a purposeful generation and transmission of a message from one person to another or from one person to a group of people, all right? You're like, we all know this, but I'm bringing us back to the basics. You've been in some deep technical sessions for four days now, and I want us to go back to if you're in business, if you're a salesperson, if you're an in-house dev that communicates with an IT team, or even worse, you're communicating with non-technical people or HR or someone else, this is mission critical to your business, to your team, to being successful in your job, okay? So as I've stated, communication can be spoken or written and also can be body language communicates, right? You've heard many people say, it's not what you say, it's how you say it, all right? So we're gonna talk about body language and posture. It's a prescribed way of using words so people share information effectively. Most of the time, people are reading you and looking at you and determining if you're engaged, are you interested, are you PO'd at the situation or topic simply by the look that you give, simply by your hand gestures, your posture, and so everything communicates your point. And so our first point that we wanted to talk about was how do you effectively communicate a thought or a topic? When you're sharing an idea with someone, and when I think of this, this is how do I get team buy-in? How do I have something that I think will help my department, that'll help the end result? I have to go to my boss or my manager and I want to get them to buy in on a project or I have to go get an increased budget, okay? This is, this is critical that we're prepared for that conversation. This is not the time to wing it and just hope for the best, all right? This is not living on a prayer, all right? If you actually want positive results, you need to identify your goal. What is, what is the outcome of my conversation? What am I hoping is going to happen? A lot of people feel like, I'm gonna just throw this against the wall and hope it sticks. And most of the time, what happens? It slides right down the wall and your boss says, okay, we'll take that into consideration and nothing ever comes from it, right? So you need to be as specific as you can with them. A lot of us, including myself, talk in very uh, ambiguous language. We try to put out big lofty concepts. 
we're going to end this by talking about how do you identify your target audience? Because some people are just the facts, other people want the story and the why behind it, they want the emotional feel behind what you're saying. So I would, I would question you and say, do you know who you're talking to, you, to and do you know how you're going to approach and talk to them? Anybody do sales at any point in here? Do you sell anything? Okay, you're selling thoughts, you're selling your services, you're selling for increased budget. How you approach a person is not universal. Every individual person, you need to take a step back and say, what am I trying to convey and how are they gonna receive it? So you might wanna think about how you're delivering your message. At the bottom it says here, is this formal? Is this informal? Is this just, I'm gonna take somebody out to coffee and share, share this idea? Or is this, I'm putting together a written proposal and I'm communicating something that needs to have a definitive response? Here's a couple helpful tips. This is my favorite one. If you're going to try to get a point across, you need to wait until you're calm, okay? Something happens, something breaks, something isn't going the way that you want. Immediately you feel that bubbly side, you feel like you're about to hyperventilate, your heart starts racing. That is not the time to storm into your boss's office. It's not the time to call your client. It's certainly not the time for me to go speak to my wife, okay? What you need to do is take a deep breath and say, I, is this something that is mandatory that I address and get my point across now, or do I have time to process and calm down? Can I cool the jets for a minute and come from a neutral place? I don't care if in your mind you think you're in a cool place, soon as you walk in, someone's gonna look at you and be like, okay, right? They immediately start taking a step back, they're like, something's not going well, right? So you're immediately putting up a wall simply by your emotional state. So the best form of communication is probably to start with yourself, okay? Where am I at? Am I centered? How's my inner chi? Am I in a good place to get this point across? Because if not, I'm never gonna get the end result that I'm looking for. Really important point here, when you want to get someone else to buy in, People love it when they think it's their idea, okay? So you can come at somebody and tell them and think you're educating them. You immediately come across like you're elevating yourself or your point or idea. The best and, and sneaky approach is to come underneath. You provide value and worth to the other person as you start. So if you've got a team member that you feel isn't pulling their weight, if you go in there and say, you're really slacking and dropping the ball and you're not pulling your weight and it's dropping my bottom line and I'm frustrated. Wall, you've, com you've created disconnect, okay? The best way to get what you want is for connection to be in place. And the way that you do that is you start by affirming value. You're actually gonna speak the opposite of the problem to the person. So you would, in that scenario, you'd be like, man, I really appreciate all the hard work and effort that you've been putting into getting us how far we've gotten, right? And you're in the back of your mind, you're like, no, you've probably been, been watching Netflix and we're behind on this project, okay? But that's not what you're trying to communicate. You're affirming them, you're bringing value to them, and guess what happens? Connection, openness, and now they sit back in their chair and go, okay, I'll hear what you have to say, all right? We're trying to disarm tense situations by bringing respect for the other person as well as yourself. And so I'm gonna turn it over to my colleague here in one minute, but I'm leaving you with this. Uh, rather, sometimes it feels like if I'm gonna affirm and be respectful to somebody else, that makes me feel devalued or I've been hurt and burned. And the reality is you have to be okay and confident in yourself and have value and respect for yourself, okay? You are all very smart people. You wouldn't be here, your boss wouldn't have sent you here. If you can understand one quarter of what anyone has said in any session, you are smart, you have value. I wake up in the, in the morning and I look in the mirror and I'm like, you are the man. You're gonna do great work today, you're gonna communicate well, you're gonna think the right so thoughts, say the right things and get results and you're gonna win and influence people to come around you and wanna see your vision succeed. That's how you start your day, that's how you get things accomplished. 
If you walk in there with no confidence, do you think anybody's gonna buy into what you're trying to sell or the idea you wanna pitch? No. It starts with respect for yourself and valuing what you're bringing. Tag. All right. <laughs> so some of you are probably wondering, who am I? I'm Anthony Coltman. I'm a senior consultant with Kalos Consulting, also a family man. Married my wife Evelyn in 2013, and I actually started working with Kalos about two years ago in a full-time capacity, did some consulting and, and, and some contracting and kind of getting to know Brandon a little deeper, and then we really jumped in together. Uh, I have two kids. Those are my daughters, Addie and Sierra, who I love dearly, and uh, you know, I think we've Brandon and I, in, even in our relationship, in our communication, share some similar things and we found some ways in which, as family people, we can connect. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm also into the outdoors, uh, done some fishing, I'm a musician, so I enjoy the, the left brain, right brain world, uh, and I've been in the nonprofit world as well before. Uh, actually founded my own nonprofit, uh, working with youth, kids uh, and, and helping them grow and achieve their goals and so uh, that kind of communication actually translates very well because uh, human beings from a young age to an old age we all want to grow we all want to succeed we all want to be successful so this is the part that I'm going to talk about is how do we actually when, what, as Brandon was saying, when the, the respect or the, you know, the communication actually begins to break down, now what are we going to do? So it comes down to two things. Psychologists have, have studied and learned that in the workplace environment, there are two things that we are always measuring whenever we interact with somebody for the first time and any successive time after that. We're measuring two things. We're trying to figure out what is this person's intention. Does this person care about what I care about? Does this person have care for me? Does this person have care for what I'm trying to accomplish? Also, we also are trying to figure out what their intentions are in their own realm, their own sphere, their own place in which they are doing their business or their life, and we're trying to determine whether or not there's some match there. So clearly, clearly stating our intention is kind of the first step, especially towards helping us dealing with conflict uh, when it comes to uh, a collaborative style of dealing with, with conflict, with, with conflict management in general. So there's, there's five different styles, and I would just say that in this type of world where you know, a workplace innovation platform Innovation, that requires collaboration on a constant basis. And so a, co a collaborative uh, conflict management style requires that we not only understand other people's intentions, but we actually clearly state our own intentions. So being able to stop someone and say, hey, before we go any farther with this conversation or before I present any more ideas of where I'd like this project to go, or if, if we're selling something, before I tell you why this is important, I want you to understand why I'm here, why am I, I, I'm even talking to you. My intention is to actually bring value into your world, or my intention is to offer you this service, or my intention is to be a team player. My intention is very critical because that person, whether they recognize it or not, is subconsciously evaluating my intention. Right? So then, here's the next thing that we ask. Once we've figured out what their intention is, then we start asking, can we respect them? Can they actually live up to, perform, accomplish the things they've told me that they intend to be able to bring or provide? And we're all subconsciously asking those questions ourselves. We're wondering, can this person do? Do they intend to do something for me? But then, can they actually take a step that is going to make that intention a reality? 
So what do we have to do as, as people that are communicating in the real world? We have to clearly state the action steps that we're going to take. And we need to learn how to re require of the people around us and ask them sincerely for their action steps. We actually have to, to, to learn that the respect that we want and the respect that we're gonna give to others and giving it first, we have to clearly state what that actually looks like. So I've included this quote <laughs> because it's, it's, it's very easy. It, th this is from Dale Carnegie. It says, any fool can criticize, complain, and condemn, and most fools do, but it takes character and self-control to be understanding and forgiving. One of the best ways that we can show our intention or re-communicate our ability to respect someone or have their respect is by actually showing understanding through conflict and even forgiveness when that person maybe disrespects their original intention. Does that make sense? Okay, so it's easy for us to be like, you know, I know what the problem is here. This person just wasn't respectable or this person wasn't intending the right way. But unless we are gonna reach out and give the opportunity to restore that, that connection point in which we are gonna actually accomplish things and try on something like understanding and forgiving, we're gonna have a really hard time stepping away from the foolish ideas of criticism is our best accomplishment. Does that make sense? Cool. So, another study was done and this study was done across a variety of industries. Uh, it, it, in highly technical uh, roles, it was, it was also done among salespeople and there's one skill that translates for top performers. We found one skill that was common to all top performers. They developed the ability to ask good questions. And as a situation evolved, they evolved their thinking. So not only did they ask questions about how are we going to do this, but they actually changed those questions to how are we going to do this together? Or how are we going to accomplish something that goes beyond just this immediate task, but actually sees around the problem? Those are the types of people in every single industry and in every single type of role and capacity uh, that become the top performers because they're willing to go past what's already known in the relationship or in the connection or in the business contact. Because we might know each other, but we might not know what's past that point of just simply what's declared on the surface and that unknown area is actually where we're gonna do our best work, <laughs> where we're gonna get our best collaboration done and frankly where all the best ideas typically come from. You know, below the, the surface of the iceberg, below the surface of the water, that's where the real depth and strength and power of that, of that thing actually is. So the game plan is we need to start declaring to other people around us in the workplace, maybe even to ourselves, what our intention is, right? But then we need to start and listen and take feedback from the place of intention and respect. What we're actually looking for is, is the same thing we need to be giving, and that is the ability to say, you know what, what you have to say is just as important to me as what I have to say. Is your game plan to win the argument, the conflict, or the person? And this becomes a critical question because if your goal is to leave that connection point where it is and move on, then, then you're, you're already ready to do those things and you need to put that game plan in place. But if you actually see that the way forward is going to create value for everyone, if there's a conflict, what becomes the critical component? Whether or not this person understands that I actually see value in them and that I'm more interested in the connection and the strength of the working relationship or the 
I mean, frankly, we can communicate in any area of our lives. But specifically in the workplace, do I see the person or do I, do I just see this point of contention and my argument in that way? So kind of to, to wrap those things up, we're going to talk about uh, how you can to get to know and understand the types of people you're dealing with and how to actually put this game plan of listen first and ask the right questions into place. And that's going to be Brandon. How many would say honestly that they feel like they, if, if your workplace person is sitting there, don't, don't raise your hand, it's okay. But how many feel like sometimes toxic communication or you're constantly feel like maybe I misunderstood or you've tried to go in and share something with a colleague or your boss or your manager and you leave and you're like, they totally misread what I was trying to say. They totally don't understand and you feel like I was misheard or misrepresented. Anybody ever felt that way? All the time we feel that way. What we're trying to say, and it feels like somewhere between my mouth and your ears, there's some sort of tornado thing happening, and by the time you hear it, you're like, that's not at all what I was trying to say, right? So in a perfect world, all your team members instantly know the best way to work and communicate with each other, and everyone simply gets along. The same holds true for your sales team. In just a matter of seconds, they can instantly connect with a customer and seal the deal and move forward. We all know in the real world, not so much. So you can build a winning team that has respect and communication with each other, that the leaders and the customers, by looking at four distinct areas. Listen, I've got eight minutes. There's people who've studied this for a lifetime and are still trying to figure it out. I'm giving you a little taste to say, go home, start looking into some of these things because it's a game changer. It's really blown up my approach to people and sales. Me and my wife are doing much better in our communication because I start to know my audience and recognize who I'm talking to. So I'm gonna talk about a disc profile, okay? Essentially what this is, there's two main types on the market of profiling people. There's Myers-Briggs and there's DISC. Myers-Briggs measures 16 behavior styles, DISC measures over 300 behavior styles of people. Most use DISC for building effective teams, for understanding and get along with one another. People use it a part of their hiring process. Dr. William Martinson studied these four styles of behavior that I'm gonna introduce you to, okay? He was a Harvard guy. He actually was the guy who helped invent the lie detector test. So right away I'm like, I like this guy. So DISC was, looks at the behavior within the emotional intelligence of a person. It is not a personality test. There's tons of those out there and you're gonna find out you know, what animal you're mostly like or what color you are. We're talking about reading the emotional intelligence and the behavior of a person. So I'm gonna introduce you to the four from a very high level and then this will be something that as you grasp this, you're gonna find out who you are and then you're gonna to start to know and recognize your boss, your colleague, the next sales client you're gonna to talk to, and you're gonna be able to say, I bet their hardwiring is like this, and so my approach of when I always come at them from this angle and why it never registers, all I gotta do is come in from the right with a different style and approach, and all of a sudden, you're gonna see breakthrough in areas where there's been tension, okay? So the three are D-I-S-C. D stands for decisive or dominance. Who are these people? Arnold Schwarzenegger, Charles Barkley, David Letterman, Donald Trump, Hillary Clinton, surprisingly, uh, Jack Nicholas, Jerry Seinfeld, Michael Jordan, Robert De Niro, Russell Crowe, these are all Ds, okay? This doesn't mean that you're necessarily the type A loud outspoken person. What it means is that they're direct and forceful, they're people who prefer this style of value and action and achievement, tend to be fast paced, they're task oriented. If you come into them with a 10 minute story leading up to why you're coming to them, they are literally checked out and they're sitting there saying, would you please just get to the point, please? Just the facts, ma'am, just the facts, okay? This is a D, so you're starting to recognize how you would approach someone like that. 
I stands for an influence or interactive. Uh, I'm a high I, so that's, that's my hard wiring, so I relate to these people. This is Eddie Murphy, Jay Leno, Liza Minnelli, Oprah Winfrey, Robin Williams and Richard Pryor, Steve Martin, seems like a lot of comedians are eyes. Uh, Will Smith, Jim Carrey, they're lively and social people. They prefer this style of value in relationships and enthusiasm. They also tend to be people focused and fast paced. An S, steadiness, stabilizing. John Denver, Gandhi, Michael J. Fox, Martin Luther King, Mother Teresa, Mr. Rogers, Nicole Kidman. They're even tempered and loyal. They're people who prefer this style of value and cooperation, and they tend to be moderately paced and also people focused. You have an, a C, this is cautious, okay? They're conscientious. They're private and analytical. They're people who prefer the value of accuracy and standards, and they're moderately paced and very task oriented. Albert Einstein, Bill Gates, Diane Sawyer, Mr. Spock. These are C's, okay? When you're approaching and you get, first thing you need to do is figure out who am I? Because I have a tendency and a style and the way that people approach me, now I know why do I get so annoyed by this person or this thing? And you recognize because the way that I receive information may be different than how I give information. So D's like getting the job done. That's the most important thing. Never mind the details, I may hurt feelings. So you may have a manager or a boss or a coworker that's a high D. They're not purposely hurting your feelings, okay? They're actually just communicating their behavior style and that's how it comes across and depending on where you fall in this category, it's gonna impact you or potentially hurt you more than a D talking to another D. If you're an I, that's very expressive, impulsive, and persuasive. They're creative and fun to be around. You could recognize how you may have a team that's all one of these, and you could see where you may have a problem. If you're a, if you're a high C, you're very cautious, and everyone else is throwing the details out the window, you're probably pulling your hair out on an average day, all right? S's are very stabilizing. They're a team player, unbelievably loyal and steady. We love having S's on our team. S's are very nice. They're patient. They make great teachers or coaches. They're devoted to the team or company. And the C's, they're the highest quality control interest of any of the styles. Anything with more rules that you can shake a bureaucrat at, they love rules and details and procedures. I've got two minutes and I wanna leave you with this, okay? Uh, first off, there's tons of profiles out there. Take a disc profile, recognize who you are, and then you can play this fun game of saying, I bet that my, my boss or Uncle Larry who drives me up a wall is this way. And so when you come to Thanksgiving this year, you can be ready to engage with and bring connection. Overall, we're talking about communicating your message, your point, we're talking about disarming conflict. A lot of us tend to have this inner player movie going on in our head and in our heart when you're walking through here and you're like, oh, this person and that person and you're talking, you're murmuring in your head. And I just wanna say, most people have no idea what's going on in your head or in your heart, okay? And so many of us are holding grudges on coworkers, past ex-employees for years. They don't have a clue, right? And so there's nothing more freeing than to realize that to be clear is to be kind. Clear to myself, understand what I'm saying, and some of us may have to sit down and have some honest heart-to-hearts with coworkers. Say, hey, I've actually been holding a grudge for this thing. I'm totally sorry, it's bogus. You probably don't even know that I've been upset, but that's why I avoid you. That's why every time you say something, I roll my eyes, all right? And some of us need to clearly learn to communicate our feelings and intentions and just be real with people. We're with people at work, sometimes more than our families, all right? This is our second family. So we're hoping that you take away from this to start to build connection with the people you work with, family members and friends, and to go after and go on this journey of being excellent communicators. I believe I'm out of time. Awesome. Appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. We'd love to have a chat with you afterwards or at our booth. We'll hang out over here. Have an awesome rest of the conference.